It is very, very, very windy here. And I was supposed to go to the store, to the supermarket to do some groceries, but um, I think I'm just gonna choose starvation instead. <laughs> like, I shan't be dealing with obstacles today. <laughs> it was such a classy way to say shan't. Hello and welcome, my name is Miro, and this is not another Hoya video. Surprise or disappointment, but I think it's a, probably like a relief thing for a lot of you. <laughs> There's been a lot of Hoya videos. Today I thought it would be a good idea to talk about some of the IKEA products that I use in my plant collection that make my life just a little bit easier. Now I think you have seen most of them, but maybe some of them you haven't, and I think it's been a long time since I started to grow plants and I tried out a lot of products, not all of them, there's still some IKEA items that I would like to try out, but also I would like to hear what are some of the products that you use. So maybe before you even just hear what I use, you just type right away what is it that you use and I don't know. I think it will be a very fun comment section where we all try to spell the names of, you know, IKEA items and we all miserably fail, just like I will fail pronouncing them. All right, so I made a list that is on my phone and I don't use all of the, well, actually I do use all of these still. I just don't use them strictly for plants. I will explain when we get to the item. I think one of these has been discontinued, but there is, I think, a suitable replacement. So I will just bring it up anyways. So obviously the first item or the first two items on my list from Ikea are my cabinets. I have two Ikea cabinets. I have the Millsbow, the tall one. I don't think they actually make the smaller, wider one anymore because I only see the tall one being available. And the second one is the Rodsta cabinet. I have two behind me. I only purchased one. The other one has been given to me by my friend for use. Ikea cabinets have been very popular in the houseplant community and for a good reason. They look nice and Plants look nice in them, and in many cases, they do make it easier for us to take care of the plants. If your home is dry, you can just put the plants in the cabinets, and it is much easier to maintain the humidity. Also, I think it's kind of a good way to keep it all nice and tidy looking, and it does help with pest management. If you have the pests in one cabinet, you can just take the plants out, spray them, and put them back in. And they're all kind of isolated, so they don't mix with the plants outside the cabinets. There are two things about IKEA cabinets that don't really make them so accessible. First one is there's just not enough of them. They are almost always out of stock. It's not very common that you will find them in stock, and when you do, they tend to pretty quickly go out of stock. And the other thing is they be pricey. They are definitely very pricey. I, When I was buying mine, they were not so expensive. I did kind of manage to grab them before that influx in price. I think my Millsbo cabinet was around $230 or $340. Rodsta was, I think, around $130. Now Rodsta, at least here, is close to $200 and Millsbo is close to $300. So the price definitely has gone up. Do I think they're still worth it? I think they're very pretty, but I definitely think I could do without them. However, there is one tip that I would like to share with you. Just recently, I went to Ikea because my sister wanted to get a new bed for her, and I saw a rat stuff for $60. Did I want to get it? Yes. However, I did not know if it was going to fit in the car. Well, actually, I did know that it was going to fit in the car because I knew that the bed isn't, but whatever. It was a small argument there. Anyways, until we have figured out, or at least until my sister accepted that the bed isn't fitting into the car and that she will have to pay for the delivery, another lady bought the Rodsta, and I wish her all the best, like Adele. Never mind, I will find another Rodsta for me that I don't really need. So this Rodsta was in the section where things are discounted. Uh, this section changed the name. Here it was called As Is before. I don't know what the name is now, but I saw that it changed, but I didn't really care. And I think the issue with this Rodsta was that it was missing the glass shelves. However, in most of the cases, you are not gonna be using the glass shelves. You're probably gonna have a custom made shelves. I had my shelves custom made and they were very, very cheap, around 10 bucks. And usually people do this, they custom make the shelves, so you don't really even need them. And I think it was a good deal. Now for $60 or 70, I think it was $70 actually, 
I would 100% get the Rudsta cabinet. I think the current price, $200, is pretty steep. I would, if I were you, look online for something similar. There are plenty of cabinets. Unfortunately, when I was buying my cabinets, that was the time where I could not find any cabinet online. But before that and after that, I was able to find pretty, pretty good cabinets online for not a lot of money. So, you know, be more patient than I was. The third item on this list is like the entire system of things. It is the Scotty system. We can see one of the pegboards here. This is a pegboard that is left over from one of my Rodsta cabinets. I used to have them in my cabinets, both in my Millsbo and in my Rodsta. Since then I took them out. There's nothing wrong with having them. It's just what, you know, you, you decide on what setup you want to have in your cabinet. I had it with the pegboard. Now I'm having it without. I like both of the setups, you know, I wish I could have multiple cabinets and infinite amount of space for all of my setup ideas. Scotty spag boards can be used as a tool to make yourself not just a hoya wall, but a plant wall. And actually, I will try with an orchid wall. Just kidding, I'm not getting more orchids. I did have two hoya walls in the past, they still kind of do, but one of them is sort of empty. The other one has philodendron tortum in it and it doesn't look the best. In a sense, I'm not satisfied with the selection of plants and fullness. I think in the past my hoya wall looked a little bit better and I can still work on it and um, I think a couple of orchids would make a nice addition. Can you think that I've been thinking about orchids lately? <laughs> I don't know, what, what what gives it away? Betsy also made a video where she made a very, very big wall with Scotty spec boards. I think she used four. I only used ever one. I do have a bigger Hoya wall here, but that is not with Scotty spec boards. And the reason for that is the clips are not the cheapest. And that is actually the whole thing here. So the boards are not expensive, but two clips are $4, at least here. If you want to hang a lot of plants, you will need a lot of clips. Sometimes they are discounted where you can get two clips for $2, and I think that should be the regular price. So, you know, IKEA CEO who is definitely watching this, you're welcome. I'm fixing your business here, basically. There are other ways. My friend Alex 3D printed these spots with a holder. I will leave a link down below where you can go to this website where people get 3D prints. You can hear the wind. Um, what are you doing with my windows? What's happening? Is this house about to take off like in Wizard of Oz? Am I gonna meet the Wicked Witch of the West? Am I the Wicked Witch of the West? Okay, calm down. I guess we will never find out. Anyways, my friend Alex made these pots and you can basically hang them on the Scotty spag boards. There are the holders. I actually don't even know if he added the holder part, but you can do this. If you know computers, <laughs> If you have seen one of those, and if you have seen 3D printers or know how to use one or have one, I am aware that some people have, comp have computers. I'm aware that some people have computers. <laughs> what is wrong? What's happening? I'm aware that some people in my audience do have 3D printers, and if you are one of those people, I will just assume you know how to use them. So you can probably figure something out and make a cheaper clip for the Scotty spag board or you know just wait until they become cheaper. I have tried a couple of hacks they didn't really work so yeah that, that kind of sucks but you can also if you're you know proficient with the DIY tools like the drill <laughs> and you can probably make a peg board of your own and it will be just easier to put the pots in there. There are different accessories. There, there are like trays that you can use and you can put two or three smaller plants on there. So, you know, if you want to experiment with that, I definitely recommend it. And I do plan to use it still for plants. I actually wanted to put violets here, but maybe, you know, we don't need to put plants in every corner of the room. Next one I'm about to butcher is Beckvum. Beckvum is essentially a step stool. Now Betsy and I made a video that we never edited and we will never edit it. It was like a collaboration where we were having some cider online, obviously, and painting our Beckvum stools. Mine came in the natural kind of wood color, no color, whatever, finish, just wood finish. And we painted both of our step stools red. I love my step stool. I use it all the time to water the plants that are hanging, to water my grow tent that is on top of two other grow tents. 
They're just so, so useful. And you can collapse them and you can put them behind the closet or under your bed. I think everyone needs to have these step stools. I am, I always use them. A day doesn't pass by that I do not use my step stool. This video is sponsored by Step Stools of the World. <laughs> I love this step stool and when my friends come over and there is no place to sit, there is the step stool. And I like to sit on the step stool too. Can you tell that I like it? <laughs> this next thing is not IKEA specific, but there is a good reason why I'm mentioning the ones from IKEA. And those are the Samla boxes, the plastic see-through boxes, and I use them as propagation boxes. Now the good thing about them is they come in various sizes. As, as do other plastic boxes, but uh, what is good with these ones, they have boxes that don't take up much space, like the footprint isn't that big, but they're very tall, and they can fit into my Rodsta cabinet very easily. You have tall prop boxes, obviously, or just regular see-through boxes, but those are usually very big. They're very tall, but very big. These ones are very tall, but kind of narrow and small, so if you have only several cuttings that you want to put in that are kind of tall, you can do so. Like philodendrons, any philodendron will require a prop box that is a bit taller, and some Hoyas if the vine is very long. So that is why I wanted to mention these specifically. I don't have just from Ikea, I have a million of different uh, prop boxes, but the Ikea ones I like, especially because of the height. And again, there is just a wide selection of sizes and you can just, you know, choose whatever you would like. Now this next item is a big staple of my grow tents and my previous setups. These are the Omar shelves. I know that these wire rack type of shelves are available from other manufacturers, not really here. I have in both of my tents Omar shelves in the big uh, grow tent that is 150 by 150 provided to me by Mars Hydro. I have three Omar shelves and in the smaller one I have two. There are also smaller shelves than the ones that I use that they were also in my tent. They are not currently because I filled them out with the big shelves, but they are just really, really good for the tents. I put Hoyas on the top level and on the bottom level and the light gets to all of them. I also put in my tents these Omar baskets. Now, unfortunately, I don't think these are produced anymore or at least they're not sold here anymore but they are just an amazing addition. They can fit on my Hoya grow wall that is behind me, but also they fit perfectly onto the Omer shelves as they should that are in my grow tents. And I have been able to put so many plants just to kind of extend that shelf a little bit. Now the shelves that I have, I think are about 36 centimeters in width. They don't make those anymore for whatever reason, they only make wider ones. So if you have a tent that is like my Mars Hydro 120 by 120, that's gonna be probably a bit tight. And Betsy, I know she has even a smaller grow tent, 100 by 100. You would not be able to put two, I think, of those shelves in there. And they have been outside of my tents as well. If you look at my previous videos, you will see them next to the window. Well, we're not looking at the window right now, but they have been there. They have been all over the room, actually. And I put on all of my shelves, I put these wheels because you can unscrew the bottom part, kind of leg. On the, on the shelf, or it's not actually the leg. There is like a small thing on the black part that makes the leg. You can unscrew that and you can screw in these small wheels and that just makes it so easy to move them around. I don't have that in my tent because I don't need to move them around so frequently, but when they were in my room, they were all on wheels. Actually, a lot of my furniture used to be on wheels. This desk still is, but I don't move it anymore. <laughs> One time my friend came here and she was so angry because my chair was on wheels, my desk was on wheels, the shelves, everything, and she was kind of trying to sit down and I think the furniture started to kind of escape from her and she was trying to grab something that's stable but everything was moving. Uh, I have an obsession with wheels. Greatest invention ever. The only issue that I have with these Omer shelves, and this is not an issue, if I was buying them again I would get the ones, I don't actually know if they still make them, the ones that I have the lip or kind of like a small fence around because some of these shelves are not perfectly flat, they kind of have a little tummy <laughs> like that so the plants can easily fall off and that's not a great time for me because that means cleanup. So I would just pick different ones with a little bit of the raised edge. That's the first issue. And the second issue, the green ones are not great. They fall apart very easily. I think it's the coating and it makes it um, 
and that there is like plastic that holds the shelf and it just cannot grip onto that coating very well so if you move it around it's gonna fall apart like 99.9% .9 of the time. Not when they're standing, they're fine, but if you want to move them around a bit to clean, you're looking into a, a problem there. The next one is not a horror movie, it is called Bagmuck. Bagmuck. Muck makes sense. It's a shoe tray. It's a, it's a shoe tray. I have a lot of these shoe trays and um, I don't, it's not because I have a lot of shoes, I don't, I have like three pairs perhaps. And that's being very generous. I wear like one. <laughs> they, they used to go on my Omer shelves in the past. So every level actually used to have the shoe trays because again, I did not find them to be very stable. So when I move them around, the plants would just uh, slip because again, the Omer shelves have that little belly. So I solved that with the, with this shoe tray. But now I use these shoe trays for repotting and they're just so good for that. I've seen a lot of people use the shoe trays for that. Perfect, ideal, love them for that. I just have so many of these trays right now that I can just invite a bunch of my friends and we can have like a long repotting session, which is probably why they're not replying to my messages. <laughs> my idea of a good time. Another thing that you have seen in my videos is the Riga clothes rack. I find this again, super useful. I, it did kind of lose its original function because my original idea was because I have a lot of hoes that hang when I shower them I can hang them on this clothes rack and I can put one of the trays underneath and they can kind of drip there so they don't drip all over my floor and I have used it for that purpose only once and then I kind of used it to put plants on it and to move them around currently it's actually not in the room because there is not enough space I think I will rearrange something so I can fit it here next to the window. And I think it will be very nice to have like, plants hanging from that, but it's very useful for my original plan as well to just hang plants on it and kind of let them drip if you have like a tray there. Because it's always kind of complicated when you spray or when you shower your hanging plants. It would be best to hang them right away. Very useful in my opinion. You can put prop boxes on the bottom or plants on the bottom. Absolutely do not use it for clothes and for shoes. We do not want to use any of these items for their original purpose. No. We want to use them only for plants. <laughs> okay, this is the discontinued item. This is Swalnas Bamboo Wall Shelf. I actually still have it. And you have seen it in one of my videos in the past where I was making a Hoya wall here, but a different kind of Hoya wall. I was making the wall with the actual boards. It used to be a plant shelf on my wall. I loved it. The only reason why I disassembled it is I moved to this Scotty system. I thought it looked better and it, I don't think that any which one is worse, but I don't actually have space because my tall Millsbo is on the wall where this shelf was, so it cannot actually fit. It's right now next to my bed and I keep some of my Hoya books and Hoya Telegraphen on there. Not something that you necessarily need to, need to get from Ikea. I do think that this system was particularly nice looking. I don't know why they discontinued it, but those bamboo shelves were super nice. I mean, they still are. It's one of my probably favorite designs that Ikea did, and I think it was very popular, so who knows why they discontinued it, but that's something that I used to use in the past for plants. Again, if you have seen my videos from the past, meaning from the two years ago, you will probably see the Ivar shelves in the back. They used to be the natural wood color, then I painted them green, then I wanted to paint them white, or actually I kind of wanted to close them to make plant cabinets from them because plant cabinets were just impossible to find. I never finished that, but I did use Ivor shelves for my plants. And again, it was very, very nice. I know a lot of people use the Ivor system for plants. It looks very nice in your room. It's very nice wood. I would make sure to protect it with some coating because your pots will most likely stain the wood. Even if you use something like the plants, if you have Hoyas, the buds will fall, they will stain the wood. So I would just protect it somehow with some coating. But other than that, it looks perfect. You can adjust the height. That is also why I actually like the Omer system. I tend to avoid the shelf system where we cannot adjust the height because we always need to do that. Plants grow and you need to do it. I don't use it right now for the plants because it just doesn't fit anywhere in the room or with the current aesthetic, which is, you know, black boxes, <laughs> huge grow tents. But I do use it to store my plant stuff, my potting mixes. I use it to store my stuff for packing plants when I have to send some of my cuttings. 
so I do still act actually actively use the shelves. And the last thing that I use from Ikea, and I still use it to store my ceramic pots that I don't use, but this is the Halus system. And this was in my room. Again, I don't have so much space right now and I have two big grow tents, but I actually use the Halus system with the Halus cover as kind of like a small grow tent. And this is very affordable way for you to kind of get a close shelf you can, that you can use for propagations, that you can use to grow your plants. I did drill into mine because they're very cheap, they're aluminum, and actually I'm not sure if they're aluminum, some type of metal, some type of cheap metal uh, that is not very thick, easy to drill, and you can just hook up the lights on them. They're not super stable, I would say, but if you put them close to a wall, you'll be fine. I mean, I'm the person that put a grow tent on top of two other grow tents, so I'm not really the one to talk about things being safe and stable. That can be interpreted in so many ways. I think this is probably like the cheapest and the most affordable solution to get something small that will kind of work like an indoor greenhouse. And I do actually regret that I don't have the covers for the Omar shelves because I would actually recommend that even more because those shelves are sturdier than the Hillis, but you know. We will take what we can get. All right, that is all for today. The wind is banging against my windows, so it's ready to take me to my home back in Oz, to the west where my wicked castle is. I don't know. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you found it useful. If you use some other items, do let me know in the comments below and let me know what you think about these ones. And you know what? The hunger is getting to me, so I think I will have to go and face the wind the harsh conditions of the outside world. You are all lucky that you are inside. You would be flying all over the yard and the street. Just, these plants are very lucky. So you better not be problematic or I'm kicking you out. All right, time to wrap this up. Have a wonderful weekend and I will see you soon. Goodbye. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Anne Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, NC, Ashley Hoyas, Becky Higgins, Beth Gibson, Betsy, Danub Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Diane Sikorsky, Vera, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppenkamp, Hoji Scott, Halsplin Heather, Hoya Heather, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chio, Kara, Casey Gross Hoyas, Kelly Koo, Kelso, Kristen Sherwood, Leplanda Steph, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Har, Mars B, Martina Alif Perday, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grunrus, Nelly Yang, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Schleif Tropicals, Nita Macy, PJ, Robin L. Jennings, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Stephanie Zili May, Sybil Williams, Tanya, Tessa Martins, The Swedish Hoya Dude, Tia B, TJ. JWO, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Yuta the Wallamut, Zordorama, and Zlokov Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons Angelina Farnon, Anne Margaret, Anna Kay, Brenda Little, Brenna B, Brana Phillips, Kilone, Christina Greengrass, Claudia L, Fluffy Blue Sheep, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Plan Druid, Plantalania, Ringlov, and Tang Watanas Riakul. Also, a thank you to my $1 patrons Brandon Pacheco, Carrie, Kari, Constance, Emilia Bronson, Jacinta, Jolie Sullivan, Kayla Vavra, Lauren M, Lori Ansubramanium, Luzman Fernandez, Neely Spicer, and Olivia Chill Mueller. Thank you all so much for your incredible support. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon.